Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Edge Sports Network. We've got another interview for you guys today, part of our summer series. we got Zach Reichel, Oregon State men's basketball. Zach, thanks so much for joining us here on the site today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Great to have you on. First question for you here. We're out on the East Coast. I've heard Oregon. I've heard Oregon. I mean, what what is the pronunciation here? Uh, yeah, I, I say Oregon. Uh, All right. I've been living here my whole life, so that's, yeah, that's how we pronounce it. All right, that's the one I go with, but... I was getting into like heated debates with people who have never even been to the state about how to pronounce it, so uh, I had to get that out of the way first. So Oregon State, there we go. I got it down. So um, I want to start off here. I mean, you've had a great first three years of the program, headed into your senior season. You come off a season where you average eight points, three rebounds, couple of assists, shot the ball at forty three percent. Um, how'd you feel this past year? It was you know probably your best season to date. So. How did you just kind of feel with the program and, you know, team chemistry-wise and stuff? Yeah, I felt a lot better. Uh, I think the biggest thing for me was uh, just getting my confidence back. I would say mm-hmm. I was a lot less confident uh, my first two years, but I think I was a lot more confident last year. And, uh, you know, obviously this year with losing some, you know, big guys on our team, I'll have to take on a bigger role and more responsibility. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to that. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, just – Looking forward to this next year and, you know, getting with the team. For sure. And I know you mentioned you're from Oregon. Um, How does it kind of feel to be able to play with, you know, a hometown program like Oregon State, just kind of to represent, you know, your state where you grew up? How does that feel? I'm sure growing up, I mean, it was kind of always a dream. So to finally be able to do that, what's that experience been like for you? Yeah, it's awesome, um, honestly. And I think the biggest thing for me is I have a lot of support here, lots of family Mm -hmm. here. So that's. You know, that, that really means a lot to me to have people from Oregon come to our games and support, you know, not just me, but the whole team. But, yeah, definitely being from Oregon and having that, um, you know, hometown support really, really means a lot. Yeah, for sure. I know your high school career in Oregon was amazing. You hold more than 50 high school records. You're the top-ranked player in your entire state. You were ranked by ESPN in 2016 and 2017. And I know you started every game all four years back in high school. Headed into college, I mean, how would that kind of help you get ready for the the college season grind? I know it's very kind of taxing on the body, both mentally and physically. So when you have that consistent play in high school, how would that kind of get you ready for the college play? Um, yeah, I, I definitely thought it got me ready to some extent. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely come around freshman year, you kind of get a rude awakening, and you know, you get humbled, you know, the first day at practice and all that. So I'd, I'd say that would help help me to an extent in terms of playing, but uh, college is definitely a different animal, um, mm-hmm. I would say. Um, you know, getting used to the speed of the game, the strength, you know, all the little things that matter in terms of reading defenses and your moves and just, you know, like I said, all the little things that go on. So it, it did get me ready, but I would mm-hmm. say, uh, you know, coming in my freshman year and kind of getting my butt kicked um, <laughs> freshman, sophomore year, you know, by guys in practice helped me a lot more than uh, high school did. I mean, it definitely is a learning experience. You kind of just have to go through it those first two seasons if you could kind of take anything away from those first two years in the program um would you kind of learn most from you know freshman sophomore year those early seasons when you first were getting going in college basketball um i'd say there's a big learning curve um a lot mm-hmm. of you know lots of people come in and everyone in college is the best player on their team so you coming in thinking you know a lot mm-hmm. um and you you know there's you know players that do know a lot but there's a huge learning curve and a you know big learning experience and Lots of little things that matter, you know, that make up big things in the, you know, in the game of basketball. So I'd say there's a definitely a learning experience just in terms, you know, film and, mm-hmm. you know, the way you make your moves and, like I said, listening to coaches and all that. So just the little things and, you know, the big learning curve is probably the biggest difference in my opinion. For sure. I mean, you've gotten those little things down now. You're 92 games deep into your college career, believe it or not. I'm sure it's gone by pretty quick. I know you've averaged nearly, you know, 30 minutes per game. Um, I mean, what is it like, you know, having to go through these college seasons, being able to, first of all, stay healthy. Second of all, just to kind of keep the stamina up to get through a full college season, especially when you're playing in a great conference and you have to play these top tier talented teams night in and night out. Yeah. I'd say it's more mental than physical. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, to be able to play at this level and, you know, especially in our league in the power five, you definitely have to be mentally, uh, very mentally strong because mm-hmm. it's a long season. And, um, you know, when you get, you know, the, to those last three, four weeks of 
conference play, you know, you, fatigue kind of starts creeping in a little bit mentally, and that's when you have to push through, in my opinion. Um, I'd say being responsible and getting your things done on and off the court is a big thing. Uh, mm-hmm. If you don't get your things, your school and everything done off the court, then that's uh, it's going to translate to, you know, poor play on the court. So you, you kind of have to handle your business and be very mature, you know, for those mm-hmm. you know, six, seven months during the season. So, yeah, I'd say the biggest thing for me, like I said earlier, is just um, it's a long season, fatigue starts creeping in, so you, you got to be uh, mentally tough, mentally prepared to uh, just grind through it. Definitely kind of a balancing act between the school, the basketball, and everything in between, and it uh, seems like you've handled it really well so far. Um, so I know it is a lot. you got a lot on your plate. There's no doubt about it. Can you kind of walk us through, you know, a day in the life for you during the season? You know, what's it like from start to finish? I'm sure you're pretty pretty busy all day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, for us, it's more, let's see, wake up in the morning, um, mm-hmm. go to weights, um, lift for an hour, you know, Preseason, before season, it's about getting strong. Um, and then during season, it's about maintaining and uh, recovery. Um, so, yeah, wake up, go to weights um, about 7.38 in the morning. Then you go eat breakfast. And then usually I get in. Uh, we practice from 11 to 2 mm-hmm. uh, every day. Um, so usually after that, weights ends at about 9, 8.45, 9, go eat breakfast shower and then I, I usually get a small nap in because during the season sleep is <laughs> sleep is yeah, very big yeah uh, so I get about a 15 to 20 mat nap in there uh usually when we go to practice film and practice for about three hours mm-hmm. and then for me all um all my classes in terms of the major I had were all later in the day so during the season I actually had class from uh about two to six every single day wow. two to six fifty I believe it was so about four hours of class a day for me um this mm-hmm. past year Mm-hmm. Um, this past year that was and then uh, yeah, I go home make dinner and then uh, s- study and do homework till about 10 or 11 and then uh, repeat it every single day so for me it's a uh, getting ahead on school on the weekends was pretty big for me because mm-hmm. uh, I was I, I never took less than 17 credits a term so wow. uh, I had to get ahead on school on the weekends so I could get my sleep during the week so that that was pretty big for me it was getting ahead especially during uh for road trips when road trips mm-hmm. you really don't have you really barely have any time for school mm-hmm. so getting kind of ahead a week in advance was uh, pretty big for me so yeah it's a you know 16 to 18 hour days every single day and i'm sure that most student athletes in any other sport can relate to that mm-hmm. man that is a jam-packed day right there and then I think that's one thing you mentioned too that people might not even realize just traveling too how much that takes up yeah um yep yeah, because, like, that's something that, you know, I, I don't even really think of much. You just see you guys playing on the road, and they're like, oh, they just got there. But, no, they yeah, they had to travel a couple of days and, yeah, and, you know, exactly. exactly take the time to do that. So that's one thing that, you know, you got to balance on top. You got to balance with that, too. So um, definitely tough, but it seems like you're staying busy. You've handled it well so far. Um, as I mentioned, I mean, 92 games in this program you have any games that really stand out to you? Any favorite memories that you've had with the program? Um, and any, you know, moments that just really that you'll remember forever? Yeah, I'd say a big one. There's a couple. My sophomore year, I remember that uh, Stevie Thompson Jr., he had a game winner against UW mm-hmm. at home. And I was, oh, I was a freshman, actually, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a really cool game to be a part of because – if you follow our history, Stevie, I think he hit about two or three game winners on Washington in three years mm-hmm. at the buzzer. Yeah. Um, this past year, Oregon at home, that was a really cool game. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just it was just a really tough game, just a defensive battle the whole game. It was most, mm-hmm. personally the most tiring game I played, and I felt like I was going to pass out <laughs> at the end. But we ended up pulling that one out. And then uh, the most previous one was uh, in the Pac- or Pac-12 tournament that mm-hmm. lasted only a day. But yeah. it was against Utah when uh, – we beat him at the buzzer. I mean, those are some great moments right there. Um, yeah, unfortunately, the you know, with the tournament, it got canceled and whatnot. Um, obviously, with this pandemic going on, it really messed everything up. But um, I know you did touch upon that, that Oregon game. Uh, what's the atmosphere like for that rivalry? I mean, Oregon, Oregon State, I'm sure it divides your state quite a bit um, between the fan bases and stuff. But being able to play in that rivalry, how has that been for you? What's that atmosphere like? How's that experience? It's it's awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Like I like I said earlier, I'm from Oregon, so growing up in Oregon and watching this game, you know, my whole life has been 
pretty cool, but then being able to take part in the game and actually play in it, you know, significant amount of time, uh, it, it's been awesome and it's something I remember for the rest of my life. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. So playing, yeah, playing in that game, honestly, that's a game I look forward to every single year. And uh, yeah, it's just it's just amazing to play in, and the atmosphere is just crazy. Mm-hmm. Those in-state robberies are always insane, and I mean. Both your guys' fan bases are just ridiculous. Um, you know, just watching everyone in that arena screaming at the top of their lungs. Um, I'm sure it's a pretty surreal moment, especially like the first time that you played in that rivalry game. I'm sure it kind of mm-hmm. caught you off guard at first. Um, but now I'm yeah. sure you're starting, yeah, yeah, now I'm sure you're starting to get a little bit adjusted here with it. You might not ever get used to it. I don't know, but, uh, maybe starting to get yeah. the hang of it, a little bit comfortable with it at least. Um, that's yeah, for sure. Exactly. Yeah, so um, I know, yeah, you're headed into your senior season here, too. Um, obviously, one of the leaders on this team, uh, one of the older guys now. You got plenty of games under your belt. You got the knowledge of the program. What are you kind of trying to help uh, or, you know, what are you kind of trying to do for these younger guys to help them out as they progress in their career? Or if they're just coming into the program, what's kind of your leadership style to get these guys ready for this upcoming season? Yeah, um, I'd say the biggest thing for me is, uh, you know, leading by example, first and foremost. Um, can't ask anyone else to do something you wouldn't do or push them to do something you wouldn't do. So leading by example and, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's in weights or in the gym during workouts, uh, just to keep keep going hard. And we have a lot of new guys um, this year so far. So mm-hmm. I think a big thing is being patient, bringing them along. Um, you know, they're not going to they're not going to pick up on everything first day around. Mm-hmm. and uh, what our program is like um, and they may mess up a few times but it's all about learning and getting used to the program so I think just setting a great example um, and bringing them along the way being vocal mm-hmm. um, letting you know, obviously letting them know when they're doing well and doing things right and then uh, getting on them a little bit too or just, you know help teaching them when they do things wrong so I think mm-hmm. those are the two base things is just leading by example and uh, being vocal with them as well that's the way to do it um, always good to keep that open communication stuff, and that builds the team chemistry too. Gets them kind of incorporated into your guys' system, your guys' offense, your guys' defense, you name it. So, um, definitely going to be fun to see how those new guys adjust under you know your leadership, the other guys on this team's leadership, coaches' leadership, you name it. So, um, headed into the senior season here, eighteen and thirteen last year for you guys. What are some goals you have for yourself and for this team? You know, this is wrapping up your college career here. I'm sure you want to go out with a bang. So what are you kind of looking forward to this year? And what are some, you know, things you want to accomplish? Yeah, uh, for me personally, personal uh, personal goals don't really, or individual goals don't really matter uh, mm-hmm. that much to me at all, rather, other than the team. I think the, putting the team first and team success is the you know, most important. And then that individual success will come along with team success. That's something I've always uh, lived by. But, you know, for our team, I, I I don't think that we shouldn't shoot for the stars. Uh, we've mm-hmm. been talking about it since we've been back on, you know, on campus and trying to win the Pac-12, win the Pac-12, turn, or win the Pac-12 regular season, win the Pac-12 tournament, get the NCAA tournament. That's all we really talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can only talk about it so much. You really just got to put in the work. So for, I guess for me personally and our team as well, and I think they would back me up on this, I'd, those are our three main goals is just championships. And I think that Mm -hmm. if we uh, strive for that and keep working for that, then um, it'll, it'll come if we work hard, but if you don't work hard, then it's not going to come. So got to kind of, you know, quit the talk and just, just get to it. So Mm -hmm. as far as uh, goals, those are really the only three goals I have in mind. Everything else is, uh, I guess, just icing on the cake or whatever. For sure. Honestly, not a bad three goals either. I mean, I'm sure you'd be pretty happy to achieve all three of those. So um, yeah, yeah, you really can't complain with that right there. I always like to, you know, wrap up the interviews here with a couple fun questions and then one question at the end that you might have thought about, you might have not. It's it's one that, you know, kind of got to think about a little bit, but we'll get to that one. First question for you here. I saw your favorite athletes, Larry Bird. We're based out of Massachusetts, so I'm sure the way you answer this is going to, um, you know, really stick with a lot of people, a lot of our listeners out here locally, uh, a lot of people will like you because of, of your favorite athlete. I can tell you that. But what do you kind of like about Larry Bird's game? And, I mean, why is he your favorite athlete? Uh, he's, my, well, he's my family's favorite athlete. Oh, there you go. But that, so I know growing up I wasn't alive when he was playing. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, my whole family, dad kind of – I kind of grew up – I grew up watching Larry Bird highlights. 
mm-hmm. and just not necessarily try to patent my game after him, but just he's just a killer. He's, mm-hmm. he's, that's just to put it that simply, he's just a killer. He can get a shot off from anywhere. Uh, he's a hustler. He's, a, I think, personally one of the most underrated passers in the oh, yes. basketball. I don't think people understand how good of a pass he was. Mm-hmm. Just an amazing all around player, and that's something I've always strive to be just a good all-around like good all-around player I think coming out of high school and everything people thought I was only a shooter but people didn't understand look at the other aspects of my game that I could really mm-hmm. do and I you know I think I'll be in a better position to showcase sure. that this year but yeah Larry Bird he, he just does everything and I don't I don't think I, I don't talk as much trash as him because <laughs> I don't think I can back, back up as back up as much as he can but yeah he's just an all, all-around killer and all all-around great player one of the best. I mean, yeah, he did talk a lot of trash. I've heard some of those stories. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, he was very cocky, to say the least. And his passing, I think you mentioned a great point. Like, uh, there's not a lot of passing highlights I can watch from guys. Like, you know, some guys will make good passes. I'll watch them and be like, all right, that's a nice pass. But I know I, I've seen, you know, mixtapes of Larry Bird's pass. I can just sit down. I, I can watch those for, like, I I won't say hours, but like a, I could watch for a good hour, I think, because some of those passes are just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. They're ridiculous. So especially like for his era too, it wasn't really the flashiest passing era of all time. So exactly. mm-hmm, to see him do that, and he was doing it against you know guys like Magic Johnson and you know all these greats that we look back on now. So um, definitely one of the most underrated passers in the game. Um, and great guy to look up to too. So maybe the next Larry Bird. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, but second fun question for you here: If you could relive one moment in your basketball career, it doesn't have to be in college. It could be prior to college, even just like growing up as a kid. Uh, what would that basketball moment be? Oh, that's a tough one. Been a lot of been around a lot of great basketball moments. Um, mm-hmm. Probably it would either be that Utah Oregon game or my first state championship in high school mm-hmm. uh, because the year before we won, we lost by one point um, with one second on the clock. Um, mm-hmm. And so getting that, winning that championship after losing by one point the previous year, that was a, uh, that was pretty surreal. And that was awesome mm-hmm. because I had all my friends on the team and we grew up together. And so, uh, yeah, it, it was one of those three moments, but I, if I had to pick one, it'd probably be, it was, I think it was 2016, I believe it was, that, that championship year. Perfect, perfect. I mean, that must have been a really special moment. Um, one, because, you know, if you guys had lost by one point the prior year, just to come yeah. back and win the championship. And then the fact that it was with all your, your friends, too, growing up, I'm sure you guys had a, safe to say you guys had a really tight bond on that team. Mm-hmm. A very tight bond, yeah. We mm-hmm. were all, everyone was. And even the year after, we went back to back. But I'd say that 2016 year was a little bit more sweet, and everyone mm-hmm. had close bonds on the team from players to coaches. So fantastic! There's nothing better than a great, strong team bond like that, um, especially when it's with kids you've been growing up with your whole life. So um, definitely a great moment to relive. Um, and then the million dollar question: uh, If you could kind of describe basketball or what basketball is meant to you in just a word or a phrase how would you kind of describe it Ooh, um that's a tough one because there's so mm-hmm. many different words i want to use but i would say uh opportunity may be the word i've used because mm-hmm. basketball has given me so many different opportunities to do so many different things and see the world and meet different people and create lifelong uh create lifelong friendships. So I know it's kind of a weird one, but I'd say opportunity because it's opened so many doors for me and so many friendships and relationships that um, I've gained from it. So Mm -hmm. I think uh, off the top of my head, I'd say opportunity. I think that's a great way to describe it. It seems like basketball has brought you to a lot of places. It's going to continue to bring you to a lot of places. Um, I want to say, you know, congrats on a a great career so far over at Oregon state. And, um, you know, wishing you nothing but the best of luck for your senior season here. Um, looking forward to see what you do, what you guys do as a team. And I want to say, Zach, thanks so much for joining us here on the site today. Fantastic speaking with you. We'd always be glad to have you back. And again, wishing you nothing but the best this year. Awesome. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. We'll put your Twitter down below so everyone can go follow your career at Oregon State and beyond. And we'll also put a link to Oregon State's basketball website so you guys can follow for 
news and updates on the team as the season begins and for the years to come. But guys, thanks so much for joining us here on the site for another interview in our summer series. And as always, we'll see you guys next time.